when we when we thought of doing a forum on Salon, and there's a research team which was working on it. Uh, they said we've realized there's no no uh, business forum of of the kind that you are trying to set up anywhere in Asia. So why are, why are we doing it in India? And uh, where we started and we we got this idea was uh, during our one and a half decades of franchising that we've done, we realized that uh, this was one of the sectors which was uh, as important as restaurants that we were working on and restaurants were the largest contributor to franchising in the US market and we thought uh, health and beauty, salons and spas is, is going to be the second second biggest sector. The the stories are, you know, I'll I'll, I'll start from where we started franchising uh, way back in 1999. Uh, our first client or first sales visit when I was I was about to launch my first magazine, which was Franchising World, was to a gentleman called uh, the Elder Habib, and uh, we were we were four of us uh, just came out of. Uh, business school, so we were, we were expecting this to be a very corporate sales call. And we went to this salon in South X uh, where Mr. V was uh, doing a haircut. And we waited for almost one and a half hours. And it was pre-scheduled appointment. And finally, a senior, senior member of the team who was, who was really getting, getting concerned that we waited for one and a half hours, and as a salesperson, I shouldn't wait any further. Um, asked that you know if, if there's a possibility to meet Mr. Habib, otherwise we'll we'll make it some other day. And uh, unfortunately, he said my my haircut is most important. My client is most important. You guys can come later. I I never had an opportunity to see him post that. After a decade, I met his son, Javed Habib. And this was again a pre-scheduled call. And I landed at the at the reception of his Andheri office. And there was a receptionist and I said, I am here to see Javed and not even a minute later, Javed walked down and took me to his cabin. And he said that my business is not haircut or hair salon, my business is franchising. That's a change which I'm referring to in 10 years between son and a father. And what made Javed do that, and, and he's going to be with us shortly, he's, he's on his way. Uh, we've just taken an initiative with him, which is called uh, Franchising for Minorities, and largely this, this industry is driven by uh, Muslim community. We've, he said that I want to, and he's an iconic person there, so he, he wants to lead the franchising, and he feels that that's going to be the game changer for the, for the salon industry. Um, we've just done a report and I have some numbers with me and I'll, I'll share that with you and how franchising is affected, affecting those numbers, I was going to affect those numbers is what my, my prime interest is. Um, franchising, uh, today, today there are about 1 million plus, uh, I won't call them organized, but at least respected salons which has some, some business uh, potential. Now, out of these 1 million salons, only 3,000 are branded. With this as a change, what we are looking at is 25% of the entire industry is going to get branded, and this is going to be through franchising. And it's a huge opportunity, and we've, we feel that by 2020, it will be about 44,000 crore industry, in, which, is, which is coming through franchising as, a, as an opportunity. Lastly, it's a, it's a people business, and I, I think at Franchise India, we are committed to uh, franchising, and we, we feel that this is, a, this is a great opportunity, because this business can be started by a single person with an investment of less than, less than 50 or 1 lakh rupees. And the opportunity is for him to become Shenaz someday. So there is a, there is a very clear ends which have, which have been defined there are, there are some best practices, there are some very clear examples which we can, we can believe in and I think this is an opportunity and this is a, this is a very clear opportunity which is there. So we are, we are committed to uh, franchising in salon business. We feel it can be a game changer for women entrepreneurs and minorities and we feel uh, um, rightly done franchising would give a, give a 
much faster growth to this industry. Whatever you believe, whatever you conceive and believe, you can achieve. So your belief is going to be the first starting point. You can underperform to your belief, you can perform up to your belief, you will never outperform your belief. If you think you are going to have a five salon owner, you will be a four salon owner. If you think you are going to be a 50 salon owner, you will be a 40 salon owner. If you think you are going to be a thousand salon owner, you will be a 900 salon owner. The chance and opportunity is in, is in front of each of us. Whoever is going to believe, whoever is going to play the game with most confidence and the risk, um, least risk is going to get the biggest pie. We are fortunate to be at the, uh, what do you call, uh, little ahead of the learning curve. That does not mean there are other people who are not learning. There are so many people who are in this business. This business is no longer the hare and the tortoise race, as we have read in the kindergarten. This business is about the hare and the hare race. The hare which is going to run the fastest is going to win the race. But that's on the one side of the game. Other side of the game is the challenges. The industry is in a fairly uh, forgiving mode. Uh, it is a great opportunity for all of us to quickly take advantage of this emerging opportunity. The customer is in a forgiving mode. The, the industry is just emerging. It is unlike the Western uh, uh, counterpart where the industry is fairly well emerged. The standards are set. The customer expectations are set. Here the opportunities are not so, uh, uh, the, the, the rules are not so clearly drawn. So you have an opportunity to form your own, own rules, which is what we have done in South India so far, and which is what we want to do on a national scale in the coming years. Beauty business, from six salon to the 30 salon, we adopted a second model called branchising, which in, which in my mind is one step ahead of franchising. Uh, a typical franchisee franchise relationship, the franchisor comes with the brand name and the business knowledge. The franchisee comes with the local knowledge and day-to-day -day operation plus the money. And then there has to be enough margin to share between both the players. If these three criteria are met, that business is franchisable. And beauty business is world over a franchisable business. And in, in India, so many beauty salons have franchised it successfully. The second point comes, what does the franchisee expect from the franchisor? First, they want the security for their money because they are trusting, they can afford to start their own salon, but they are coming to the franchisor. So they want security for their money. That is why they are coming to the franchisor. The second point is the pride that they are the owner. Third point is they want good return on investment. If these three, the franchise, franchisor is able to provide, the franchisee will be very happy about that. So likewise, one of the key uh, um, strategy or the USP for natural fast growth is we recruited and, and gave the franchise partner the trained manpower. The other key factors being we have the only salon chain who have the Bollywood star Janili as our brand ambassador. So the marketing plays a very important role. Uh, franchise relationship plays a very important role. Uh, monitoring the business on a continuous basis plays a very important role. But to top it all, and you have to go where I have started, I believe we'll have 1,000 women entrepreneurs, 3,000 salon, and 50,000 jobs we will be able to create. That is where I'm standing in front of you and talking to you. Thank you so much.